and we are back, and uh, we're just flowing down the river of Game of the Year 2022 nominations here. Speaking of rivers, it's time to vote for the best water of 2022. That's right. Like, water is such a benchmark for graphical quality in a lot of ways. If you can make water look good, you can make a game look good. Um, and some games just have really good looking water. It's uh, it's just a thing. But in general, I feel like the reason we have this category is because uh, visually, it's one of the most impressive things you can see in a game a lot of time is the way water functions from a technical standpoint. It's often broken out, at least in PC settings, with its own graphics option, right? Yeah. So like, it's it's something where it's 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 more it's so difficult to pull off that they're like hey uh there's like three settings for water in some games um, that's water can kind of make or break it visually yeah uh that's very true and i think in this case we've only got a couple nominations but uh i think they yeah they have some very impressive water uh me personally i'm gonna pick them one over the other but why don't we start off with Let's see, Greg, you're kind of a graphics guy. Do you who who did you think had the best water so this year? I played there are two games I know it's really good water, and I played them both on PS4, and that was God of War Ragnarok and Horizon Forbidden West. Both of those had really good water, especially on the PS4. But I'd say like in terms of like how the water moved and interacted with the environment, I would say Horizon Forbidden West would be my nomination for best water. Yeah, it is my nomination as well. Um, there's some scenes, there's some moments in that game where you're in the water and it's very, it has that feeling of vast depth to it yeah. and openness. And honestly, that for me, like, Large open bodies of water are very scary to me because there's scary yeah. beasts in that water and you know it. They could lick your toes and you wouldn't even know what the <laughs> hell it was. And and then you go into the water in Horizon Forbidden West and there is definitely stuff trying to eat, trying to kill you in that. And it just backs up my irrational or more I would say rational fear of large bodies of water that like I have inside of me. So it creates a lot of tension for me as a gamer. And I think that, you know, that also can speak to the, the water as an environment as well in this game. That's really well put because the tension, it, it, there is tension in the water with uh, the, the water, I guess you could say, in terms of like the main story missions that take place in the water in Horizon Forbidden West, they do create tension. But they're also gorgeous. It's crystal clear water. Everything down there looks beautiful. And the movement that the creatures have within the water, like it, the physics of the water are amazing. But... One of the things that I enjoy about it is transitioning to the water, which you can do um, quite interestingly from flying. So I was searching for all the black boxes, which are like crashed airplanes that have little black boxes in them that you can find in the game. And uh, you can kind of like lock on to signals of them sometimes. And uh, there was one that was in the water. And as I was flying around, I just popped off and just diving into the water and transitioning from like, above it to below it so seamlessly and just having it sort of like that world is just kind of moving whether you're in it or not and uh i just really enjoyed the way that like the water played host to so much i, w I don't want to use the word depth but you know so much depth in terms of gameplay because obviously there's a lot going on down there but uh yeah it's not just gorgeous water but it actually plays like a big role in the game and that's on the PS5. Yeah. Like, I didn't even see it on the PS5. It's on PS4. I can't even imagine how better it looks on the 5. Gorgeous, PS4, man. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. They invented new... They, they created new technology in their engine specifically to... Uh, in relation to waves on the coast, which I find to be incredibly cool. Like, watching that video and watching the way that they broke down the elements that they created to create the way... The, the coastal tide coming in. That was very cool to watch. Dude, it's awesome, man. And I I lived at Ocean Beach. The beach used to be my front yard when I lived in San Francisco. Um, and yeah, it's 
it, it's very reminiscent for me, you know, in that sense. Um, just uh, seeing it in the game, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, the water is kind of all over the Bay. I mean, it's the Bay Area, you know. Like, water is you no know, type of water is in the game. My cats are doing things in the background. <laughs> But yeah, I, I really, I, it's just so impressive. And like, you know, like Bill was saying, it plays into the game. You can bottle that, put it in a Fiji bottle and sell it. You can do it. Or I guess you'd call it alloy water. Alloy, alloy, I can never, never say it right. Anyway, at any rate, um, yeah, but I think, you know, Greg, you brought up God of War. And I think God of War was uh, someone's nomination as well. Um, well, actually, I'm going to throw a bit of a curveball in here. If I may, I know, right, I know. If I may, like, wax poetic for a little bit. For me, the, the discussion around water isn't always uh, on the technical side. I think what initially started this conversation was Sea of Thieves, Wave, and Water Tech back in 2018 when it first kicked off, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's about, it, it can also be about the feeling and the artistic choice and the style of the water. And one developer that always does water in such a way that makes me feel quite relaxed and quite um at home is nintendo products and so kirby in the forgotten land it might not have the same technical sort of uh, realism as the water in horizon uh but it has a charm to it it's uh especially some of like the the, the beach areas you know it it, it reminds me of you know, Super Mario 64 playing those water-based levels and chilling on the beach and the sort of music that's in there and the you know Super Mario Sunshine. I've always found yeah. that quite appealing. Yeah. You really okay. notice it when you're fishing in that game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, I guess God of War Ragnarok isn't making your cut, Sam. Oh, I, thought, no I thought it was already up. To, I thought it was up for a nomination. Oh, no, you were the only person. I was the yeah. only one? Oh, okay. You were the only right. person. So you made you late. No, you too late now. I'm. You know what? You got gavel. Overruled. Yeah, you can't. You know. you, yeah, I just removed it from your thing, and I'm putting Kirby in there. Well, you know, look, that, that is totally fine with me, because I think the water in Kirby is gorgeous, and it does evoke that I, sense of holiday for me, and I love it. Yeah. You know what? No, I like the water in Kirby as well, and I think that you're spot on with your assessment, really. Um, and I'm not going to... Kirby's... I love, the, I love that game. Kirby is such a good game. It's a, so fun and adorable, and there's... Yeah, the water levels are definitely, like, very chillax, mm. you know? And I do appreciate that as well. Uh, so that just leaves, I think, TJ, you have a, you have a, a dark horse nomination here. Sam, bro, so, you know, it's like, it's, it's weird. Cause like games that come out very early in the year, sometimes they fall off our radar. Some, we don't think about them for a long time, but when Sam brought up Tokyo or uh, Ghostwire Tokyo the other day, it reignited a passion I have for how well that game applies everything moist. Uh, I uh, you lost I, me at moist. <laughs> no, no, but I know what you're talking about. Like, there's there's that there's that section early on where it just like kind of starts raining indoors, and mm -hmm. you kind of start to notice it a little bit. That game, its use of not only rain and fog and mist, but also like puddles are some of the most impressive things I've seen done with water in a game. Like, seeing... It's always, it's always interesting to see uh, Tokyo or parts of, Jap of parts of urban Japan portrayed in these games, but Ghostwire Tokyo, like, it presents, like, this glitz and glam nightlife of, uh, of like, an abandoned uh, downtown Tokyo under this like sheet of uh, of of just like wetness from the rain and from the spirits and from like and then when you look at puddles on the ground you like see like neon signs that you can see up in front of you reflected in the puddles of the ground and just seeing the settings like seeing the the environment around you reflected off the puddle depending on where you're looking at it from 
Like, I know it's, I don't know if it's been done on that level before, but it's so impressive at every turn. Also, I like the, the use of water in that game as a function because you actually get a water weapon in that game. And I think it's very visually appealing to, like, <laughs> charge up the water weapon and just unleash a wave that, like, blasts enemies and rips, like, bits of their, bits of them off as it, like, cuts through them. It's so cool. That's fair enough. Yeah, I don't know. I it is a very, very rainy Tokyo. Um, I will give you that, but it for me it didn't stick out as much as it did did for you when I was playing that game. Sam, would you? How did like how did the water strike you in Ghostwire Tokyo? Uh well, having not played it, I can't really speak too much uh to that. But TJ, from what he said in terms of you know. It's more than just the water. It's the different forms oh. of water, isn't it? It's the rain. It's the mist. It's the fog. And I think that that um, shows that uh, game developers can push the boundaries of you know how we consider water to appear in games. All right. Sorry, I thought you played it. I'll just let you go. I'll set you free right now. Okay. Thanks. There we go. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, with that, I think unless anybody else has any sort of argument or nomination they'd like to make, I think can get around to the voting what do you all say ozzy where's your vote going where's i'm gonna going? go with horizon forbidden west uh it yeah this a texture of that water is just just strikes me tasty tasty bay area water uh morgan where is your vote landing also going to go with horizon forbidden west it's a very 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 watery game. Bill Lavoy. Uh sticking with my nomination, Horizon Forbidden West. All right. Sam. Uh you have to vote for Kirby in the Forgotten I know, Land. I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna let you vote you're... for anything else. No, that's totally that's reasonable. That's all there is to it's it. Only because it reminds me of chilling at the beaches in Australia, Kirby. All right. It's your little weekend at Bernie's time. It is, it's great. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? I'm voting for Horizon Forbidden West myself. Oh, this wig is about to make me sneeze. Uh, uh, Donovan. Uh, Horizon for Midwest. <coughs> oh. <West. coughs> oh, my. Oh, what did I say? Oh. Uh, Greg Bunkerton Buck. Uh, Forbidden West. Forbidden West. TJ. Ghost Warrior Tokyo. Ghost Warrior Tokyo. Sticking to your guns. Let's see who the absentees voted for. Airhorn, Airhorn, Airhorn. Asif coming in with a vote for Horizon Forbidden West. And let's see what uh, Denny also voted for Horizon Forbidden West. I'm starting to see a pattern here. And uh, it looks like Sam. Oh no, Steve also voted Horizon Forbidden West. Wow. What'd we what get from shock. David, actually, I think? Oh yeah, that's right. David's not here. David. It's hard to forget that David's not here because David's yeah. always in he's my always heart. He's always here. Yeah. Yeah, he's always in my heart. Uh David voted for Horizon Forbidden West as well. All right. Well, we definitely have a pattern here, and that pattern is in the waves of Horizon Forbidden West winning best water. Of 2022. 